If anyone's curious, uh, the other directors, their favorite books were uh, Jodie Foster is Letters of a Young Poet. Oh. Uh, Sofia Coppola is something called Spring Snow, which I believe is a Japanese book. Mm-hmm. Uh, Greta Gerwig is To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Uh, David Lynch is uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis. Um, that makes perfect yes, sense. Yes, of course. Because apparently he actually did write a script for an adaptation of it. And then when he wrote the script, he's like, it's not as good as the book. So he's mm. just like, why bother yeah. doing it if it's not as good? Mm-hmm. Fair play. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Waters is Serious mm-hmm. Pleasures, The Life of Stephen Tennant, which is like a scandalous mm. Oh, uh, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Of. Okay. Yeah, it's like some British socialite guy. Yes, yes. And then uh, Stanley Kubrick's was something called The Saga of Eric Bright Eyes uh, by a fellow called Henry Ryder Haggard. Mm. And it's about a farm boy who falls in love with a princess. And one, I was just like, I've never even heard of this thing. Mm. Two, you think Kubrick would have been the guy like, oh, yeah, he spent 50 years trying to adapt it or whatever. It's, like, apparently not. They said like the, the when John Ronson went and looked through Kubrick's archives, it was a documentary a couple years back. He's saying like he even he was weirded out. I was like, yeah, this is, this book. That's been read more times than anything else in this whole house. And it's some friggin' Viking-based love story thing <laughs> that he, apparently Kubrick had no intention of ever adapting. It's like, oh, maybe, okay, okay. Maybe he thought, you, like, you can't. Right. Could it's be. too good. Yeah, yeah I mean, it might have been. like you know. But the thing is, Kubrick, would always, he always strikes at the guy who would try. He'd be like, I've mm-hmm. come at it in intricate detail from every angle. It would be interesting but, if he had some, you know, somewhere like just in his pile of things that he wanted to work on, there was, you know, like a folder with it and some mm-hmm. some unfinished work in there. I wouldn't oh, doubt it. Like, cool. And too many just, of those are proper books, though, right? That upsets me. I want someone to be like, yeah, my favorite is the Mars Attacks novelization. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> I, I feel that's weird. Like, do you have a favorite book, Lauren? Or are you going to come out with like, oh, Crime and Punishment? Uh, <laughs> um, I actually do like Crime and Punishment. Um, but no, my, uh, I well, you know, it's funny that you just said that. I was thinking I really, uh, the Mouse series, the graphic novels, Mouse 1 and oh, Mouse 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that's a good one. That's mm. a good one. Because that, that's a bit outside of the box, but not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking... <laughs> I think I'm personally, I, I keep trying to diversify my reading list lately because I've been reading a lot of horror novels. I just can't, okay. like, for some reason, it just seems to be like, that's what my, my th- like, the th- currently reading something called Kill Creek, which is just like, well, the title tells you everything you gotta know about it. <laughs> mm. I've finished uh, Stephen King's latest one just uh, like last month, Later, which is really, really good. People, mm. uh, people are wary of later day Stephen King. Guy still got it occasionally. And again, yeah, just uh, mm. loads of stuff. I get things I keep thinking aren't going to be horror novels. I got this plain bad heroines, which was like, oh, it's like an LGBT romance thing. Mm-hmm. And then it turns out like, no, it's actually about like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you like, can't escape it. There's something weird about it. It's like, apparently just keep falling arse backwards into horror books. <laughs> eh, why not? I that's, also, that's my thing. I really like um, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, which yeah. is, um, it, it's a nonfiction, which was Oliver Sacks. Um, and and all of these different patients that he had with um with different neurological conditions from disease or injury um mm. and i think i think anybody who's interested in in horror would probably really like it because it's just um you know just things that happen to people because of their mind and you know like uh, feeling like that your arm is not attached to your body like that it's you know like laying next to you like i can't get this leg out of my bed but it's not my leg it's someone else's Oh, um, yeah, Niall, you need to read that now. That can be your gateway out of straight up horror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have a big pile of books next to my bed too, but it's just like Oh no, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I do. and then I end up cross stitching cuz I'm like, oh. This is cute. I think everyone's like that. We don't finish any of the stuff we yeah. <laughs> we intend to read. Uh, so I think I the thing I got freaking uh Dune here for like the past I think I remember buying Dune the day the Lego Batman movie came out. <laughs> Holy that was crap. Back in like 2016. It's a good read, let me tell you, because I just read it recently. I think I might have brought this up. And uh, it's heavy, though. Make sure, you, make sure you're in the oh, mood. I think that's that, – because uh, the, the, the volume I have is, like, not that thick. And I was like, oh, maybe it's not as daunting as I thought. And it opened up, and the typing is so small. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like that. They tried to trick people into reading it. But like, no, look, it's, it's not that. It's only like 400 pages or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lord of the Rings does that, but it's thick anyway. It's thick and it has small print. You're like, Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but this this scene, I, we touched on something. 